And hi, this is Kerry with Multicopter Warehouse and the DJI Colorado Authorized Retail Store. And today I'm going to take you through the new version of DaVinci Resolve 14. This is actually beta number 8, so it looks like it's very, very close to uh, being released. You can still get the 12.5 version. Now, I've been recommending DaVinci Resolve for new people for, uh, I don't know, maybe the past six to nine months or so, because you can get the basic version for free and it will blow away iMovie, GoPro Studio, and any of the other ones that are out there that you're going to pay, you know, anywhere up to a couple hundred bucks for. It is on par with Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. Now, the free version is only limited in that you don't have... Uh, image noise reduction and you don't have some of the special effects and you can't do 3d stuff with it which for the vast majority of people is not going to be a problem anyway now if you want to upgrade to the studio version you can get the 12.5 where you get a little dongle right now that's what i'm doing and then you can download the version 14 studio version you can get that for 299 so it's the same price as final cut pro but i think you get a lot more for your money and when uh, beta 4 or when resolve 14 is released then you can buy it in the apple store or online for windows or for linux so it's uh, available for a different a couple different platforms well let's go ahead and get into it and i'll just do a quick little walkthrough first i'm going to go to these tabs down here at the bottom media edit color fair light and deliver media is where i ingest my data uh, i can manage my clips create bins do all kinds of stuff with that edit is editing the timeline with a handful of different effects there especially speed ramping and cutting to music and things. Color is a lot more than color. It's color grading, it's levels, it's special effects, it's stabilization, it's all kinds of things that are in the color. Fairlight is specifically for audio. If you're doing um, anything other than just basic music, you may wanna uh, learn how to use the Fairlight page. And Deliver is our export options. So we're gonna go ahead and go over to Media and I've got my drive over here. Now, a couple of things I really, really like about Resolve is that it's fast. It's very, very fast to do a lot of different things. So I'm going to find some footage here that I like. We'll just uh, start with day two from this road trip that I just did. Okay. So here's my footage from my second day of my little road trip. We'll click on a on a file here. I can mouse over to them. I can kind of scrub through them a little bit to see what I want to get. Now I can just take these clips and drop them down in the media pool, or I can actually do selects from here. And let me open up this one. I'll go to the beginning of it. I can play like, oh, that's a pretty short clip. I don't want to use that one. Let's try this one. So I want an endpoint. I'm just going to hit I as I pan up this waterfall. I'm just going to wait till I get to a spot that I want. And then I'm going to hit O for setting my out point. Now I can just take that sub clip and drop it in. And I've already done some pre-editing now before I've even gotten into the editor. Now, it's saying my clip has a different frame rate than the project settings. Do I want to change it? Yep, because I want it based on the frame rate of the files. Now, you can see my images look uh, a little washed out here. They, uh, they don't have much color to them, and that's because I shoot in D-Log. This is a color profile in any of the DJI products from the, except for the Spark, really. Uh, you can do it in the Phantom 3, the Phantom 4s, the Inspire 1, Inspire 2, you know, pretty much all the current stuff, Mavic, um, P4 Pro, you just cannot do it with the Spark. So I have Spark footage on here. You can actually easily see the difference because it's all bright and colorful because there's no color profiles. Shooting in D-Log is gonna allow me more functionality as I do my color grading. 
So I just got this clip in here and I'll just grab another one. Let's see what this shot is. Oh, that's the same one I looked at before. Here's a nice little overhead view, a little pullback. And again, I'm just going to set an, an out point. And I don't like that clip. It was too jumpy. So you can just kind of go through your footage pretty quickly here. And you can see how smooth it runs. Now, I am running on an iMac 5K, which is a pretty decently powered machine. But I do 99% of my editing on a MacBook Pro 13 inch that we got this year. And it runs very, very nicely with Resolve. All right, so now I'm going to go to my edit page and go to my media pool. So here's my images here, and I can just drag them on the timeline from there because I already kind of pre edited them a little bit. Or I can open them in the source viewer, and again, I can set, set endpoints and outpoints in here in order to choose exactly what I want. So I'm just going to grab that file and drop it into here. Or another option is you can grab it and drag it over to the right, and you can insert, overwrite, replace, fit to fill, place on top, append at the end, or ripple overwrite. So I'm just going to uh, drop it right there on the end. Left here, we have a toolbox with a number of different effects. So we have video transitions, we have a bunch of different transitions. Again, I think most of them are kind of cheesy as you'd find in any video editor these days. Audio transitions, crossfades, titles, generators to create specific things. Open effects are different types of uh, special effects filters, blurs, uh, color enhancements, some other generators, lens flares. All of these are going to work in the free version. Some of them do require the studio version, as I kind of mentioned before. There's other um, audio effects in here as well. I'm not going to do that in this section. I'm just going to, you know, put some stuff down on here. Now, once I have my timeline built out and I can put audio on here and I can cut it to the music, I'm going to go over to my color page. This is where things start looking confusing, although they're really not that bad once you get into it. Over on the left here, we have recording, color matching, color wheels, RGB mixer, and motion effects. To do color grading, I'm really just going to be in my color wheels. In the middle here, we have some other types of controls that affect how we can place different effects, which is kind of cool, as well as curves, qualifier, which allows you to do keen, power windows. There's That's a whole other discussion, and that's how we can track things or select certain areas to do effects to. The tracker, which allows me to select points or areas and track those to create motion effects. Blur and sharpen filters. Keen, if I'm doing green screen or things like that. Sizing, uh, I don't do much sizing in that area. And 3D, which uh, again, you know, it's for 3D when you have two cameras that are synced. Now this interface can look a little confusing at first because you have the stuff in the upper right here called nodes and while they don't like you to think of nodes as being layers that's kind of the best way to start thinking of them you don't have to use them uh, i started off without using nodes but now i i use them pretty heavily because it's just a way of me creating different effects along the way and i can turn them off and move them around i can adjust how they work as you get into using Resolve, you'll use nodes more and more, but you certainly don't have to. You can do everything with the, the single node. So the first thing I'm going to do is right-click on it, go to 3D LUTs, and uh, this was Phantom 4 Pro footage, which works really well with the Sony uh, S-Log. So boom, now I've got really cool color. Now there's a lot of different LUTs out there. Uh, I really recommend the ground control LUTs. They have a free one that does a fantastic job of making your color 
pop really well. The Sony ones are pretty good. The um, there's other ones that have been designed for DJI products. I don't think those are that good. I've created some of my own as I, I'm developing my own look for things. But we'll just get started with this uh, second Sony one because I think it does a, a pretty nice job. Now to do some color grading, I'm going to right click on that and say show scopes. And I usually have just my waveform and my RGB parade so I can see how my colors are and I can See here, my colors are actually pretty well balanced. My exposure is pretty good. If I want to bump up some of these shadows, I can go over here to my gamma and increase those. Maybe pull down my gain, which kind of my highlights there a little bit so I can get some more detail in there. I can bring up the shadows. So I have a lot of control over here in how I change the exposure. I can mess with the color. So I can add a little color to those mid-tones and get those rocks to have a little bit more definition to them with some color. So that using the color wheels is it's pretty simple once you kind of get the hang of it. Over on the, the right here, a couple good filters are dehaze. So that can, if there's fog or anything that's kind of interrupting the image, you can throw dehaze on there and uh, there wasn't any here, but it actually does an interesting job of making more of this detail pop out, which I think is kind of cool. So I'll, I can turn this off and we can see the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that on because because I kind of like it. And going back to our color, I can do a white balance. I did this little icon in the way bottom left corner here, and I can just select a neutral point. To try and balance my colors out set my black points i'm going to find the darkest spot that i can my white points i'm going to find the whitest spot that i can and you know generally i want to do that before i do my my color grade on it and so i just got to adjust my levels there a little bit and i've gone from this very drab, washed out look to a real poppy, colorful look very, very quickly. And then once I've got my video finished, I'm going to go over to my deliver page, set what I want my output to. And normally I'm going to use QuickTime. I'm going to use H.264 for most projects. Um, now, most of this stuff is all going to go on YouTube. and H.264 does a very, very, very good job. Uh, your images will look pretty much as, as good as they can when you upload to YouTube. If it's something that you really want to make sure that you preserve as much quality as possible, you can go and use Apple ProRes 422LT. Now, if you're using a Phantom 3, a Mavic, um, a Spark, those aren't going to matter much, even a Phantom 4 or an Inspire 1. The 422LT isn't really going to buy you anything because the, they don't have the bit rate that, you know, is going to make any difference. When we move to the Phantom 4 Pro and the Inspire 2, now those cameras can save at 100 megabits, which when we now export that to H.264, we're going to take a tiny hit in video quality. If we output to Apple ProRes 422LT, that codec can support 135 megabits. So it's actually better quality than the source material. So we're not going to lose anything. So when we upload that file to YouTube, we're going to get the best quality results possible. But I'm just going to go ahead and select H.264, go to File, give it a name. I'm going to call it Falls and then add it to my render queue. It's gonna ask me where I want to save it. I'll just select my desktop, hit okay. And then I can actually queue up a number of jobs. If these are gonna take a while to render, then I can just do them later. I can do all my edits, create several different videos. And then before I go to bed, just hit start render and let them all go. So I'll go ahead and hit start render. And we can see at the top here, it's gonna take about 30 seconds to render this file out. In the upper left-hand corner here, 
it says 26, 28, that's the frame rate that it's uh, rendering at. So you can actually kind of see the performance. Oh, I didn't color grade that second one. Ah, yep. Now, something that's kind of cool here is I'm going to select that second one and I want to apply the same color grade from the previous uh, clip. So I'm just going to hit the equals key and that maybe made it pop just a little too much and I'll just pull down my gains there, you know, drop my highlights just a smidge and there, now I've got it. So I can go back, add it to my render queue. I'm going to close the scopes there, hit start render. Do I want to overwrite it? Yep. And now it's going to start that rendering process again. So again, it's going to take about 30 seconds and then we'll have a finished product. So this is, you know, a quick, quick, quick overview of DaVinci Resolve using uh, version 14 beta 8. And I highly recommend you go and download it and start playing around with it. Uh, some of the tutorials that we've done on 12.5 are still very relevant, although some things may have been moved around just a little bit. I will be doing more videos on DaVinci Resolve 14 as it gets closer to release to show you some really cool footage and how to really make your stuff pop. So here's the final video piece. I'll go ahead and play it. And very nice, very smooth, very crisp, very sharp. Couldn't be happier with the results in very, very short period of time. So I do think you know, anytime you're using a, you're starting to use a, a very powerful tool like this, there will be some level of intimidation and hesitation to get started. But I think once you de kind of delve into it and really start working with it, you are going to love DaVinci Resolve. So this has been Kerry with Multicopter Warehouse and the DJI Colorado Authorized Retail Store here in Colorado. Thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.